Welcome again to the Wisdom Factory to Conversations That Matter. And today we want to talk about the alphabet code. What is that? Something which matters and we will find that out. And I, before I introduce our guests, I say hello to Monia, who is my co-host today again. Hi, hi everybody. And I don't know anything about the alphabet code, so I'll probably ask all the questions everybody else will ask. I hope so. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's good. And me neither, but I find it when you hear it, you know, we know the Lea and Da Vinci code and these things, you know, and we think, oh, that's something interesting. And I hope we will find out at the end of the hour. So I say hello to Tammy, who is Tammy Lee Meyer, and he, he is, let's say, the founder of the Alphabet Code. <laughs> Will you say hello and say a little bit about yourself and then about Harry, Harry van der Welde, who is the collaborator in the Alphabet Code, as I have understood. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, my, I'm Tammy. I'm, I live in uh, what's known as Vancouver, Canada, and uh, I'm a, I would say I'm a spiritual seeker, but I'm also a, um, an advocate for social change. And the, the alphabet code is a, is a very interesting thing. And I don't know why it works, but it seems to have a deeper knowledge and wisdom that is embedded in it that, uh, that carries meaning, deep meaning. And... Yeah, I'm really looking forward to going deeper. Okay. <laughs> I'm Harry van der Helder from the Netherlands. Uh, I've known Tammy for quite a few years, but uh, it's almost a year ago that we got engaged more deeply. And the thing that got me into really deep conversations with her was this alphabet code. Because to me, it was utterly nonsense. It could not exist. And I was about to basically try to debunk it as quick as I can. And uh, quite honestly, I'm still, still trying to do that and still failing. Because <laughs> it does, it's something uh, that basically blew my uh, worldview apart. I like to be analytical and uh, logical and all that. <clears throat> and the point is, uh, and I'm already jumping into it maybe, uh, that through, I like, I'm, I'm a graphic facilitator and a graphic designer and I like clarity a lot. And uh, and after a lot of thinking, I only am left with three measures to define my understanding. That's it's it's logical, and I like it. It feels good, and it works in reality. And those are the three measures I have left. And the whole point is that uh, alphabet code really r resonates on on a on a felt sense level. And it seems to, 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 to clarify things I couldn't understand otherwise. And it has its own logical coherence, but it just doesn't fit, fit my worldview. This, with it, it totally blew my worldview apart. So it, it was quite influential in my thinking and still is. And I still don't totally get it, but it's super fascinating, I can tell you, for me at least. That sounds interesting. And I'm, you know, a little bit like you. I like analytic thinking and uh, I don't believe everything uh, immediately. So you, you did a big introduction that it blew your worldview. So I think we go over and ask what is the alphabet code. Uh, so the alphabet code is a series of meanings that each letter has. Uh, that is a deep essential meaning. So A would be all that is and all that is not. So the notion of everything, which includes unity, which includes indivisibility, those aspects of what uh, all that is and all that is not is. And then B is, is moving from that state of wholeness to a state of being, a discrete separate part of reality. At representing the two-ness of things, so duality, um, self and other, mirror, teacher. And then C is seeing, to perceive, that third point, that third perspective. And so there's these fundamental meanings that carry through each letter of the alphabet. And 
uh, they tell a story. They tell a story about us really um, being present with our consciousness in a different way. One might say being woke and realizing that we are at the center of an incredible creation and that each of us is a center of that. And, uh, and further to that, that there's a potential transformation of consciousness that we can uh, walk on a path to through the realization of who we are in the universe. All right. Um, how did you come across the alphabet code? How did it emerge? <laughs> it, uh, uh, it came in a meditation. I was sitting on my couch and I had, I had really intended to um, remember my purpose. So I was actively seeking to uh, come into uh, alignment <laughs> with what my purpose in this lifetime is. And in about a half an hour, I received, I perceived the alphabet code. So the alphabet code is not something that I created. Uh, it's something that I perceived. That's how I understand it anyway. I don't, <laughs> I'm not smart enough <laughs> to be able to make it up all on my own. <laughs> I think it's, I think it really is a perception of dimensional reality uh, as it relates to consciousness and humanity that I was able to see. And so I had about a minute for each letter. And what I received in that minute was, was like um, uh, a body of information that had a lot, lot of depth. So each letter, I could feel what it was. I could, I, could, um, I could understand more about the shape my mouth made as I made the sound and the what um, deeper meanings of the shape of the letter is, as well as its numerical position in the alphabet, which is a big part of the uh, attribution of meaning, is on its placement, much like the Kabbalah. So did you write it down immediately, or how did, it, did that work, that, that you can remember? Alphabet is quite long, so... <laughs> Yeah, I actually don't remember when I first wrote it down, uh, but I really stayed present with each letter. Like there's, I can go back to that feeling and still be with that feeling, that initial feeling that I had when I received it. Um, so the, the sensing, the feeling that I had initially was really strong and really complete. You say... You felt it, so you didn't see it, you felt it. Uh, where did you feel it? I would say I saw it, I felt it, and I heard it. So it was all mm -hmm. of those things together. And in terms of where I felt it, I would say that that probably more related to where the which letter, that I was having a full body experience of um, and multi-sensual uh, sent, experience of, of these understandings, uh, understandings. And they were coming into my body, so I definitely felt them. Um, but I, it, it may be that the, it, I feel like they were equal, that I was hearing and I was seeing and I was feeling all at the same time. Um. Did you, well, what, what, I rem, what, what I associate now is um, tremendum, it, so it's kind of a bliss and kind of a, uh, something that really shakes you up. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Definitely. And so there was the initial feeling of what it was to, to like, it was awesome in the true sense of the word. <laughs> um, and... Uh, and I really had that sense of being in bliss. Um, and then when I started to take it actually into words and language, that's when it started to blow my mind. I was like, how can this be? That tree means presence, activating, energy, energy. It's, 
you know, oh. one more time. <laughs> so this is uh, the word tree and the letters T-R-E-E. -E. Yes. Uh, can you repeat that? So because... <laughs> Absolutely. T is presence. Uh -huh. um, and that's in the place of identity. So a tree is present. Mm -hmm. And then... So the placement of each letter is important. It squares the meaning in, in a similar way that the letters themselves present. So the R is in the place of, of a tree's beingness and it's activation. So a tree is activated, it's alive. And its role and its, its form is energy. E is energy. So a tree in the alphabet code means presence activating energy energy hmm i have to yeah let that settle in <laughs> yeah let me harry is is nodding yeah. because <laughs> I uh, want did, to... did you read the kabbalah have you ever studied the kabbalah and the the, the ciphers of the kabbalah because i have a book that blew my mind uh many decades ago that is about the ciphers of the kabbalah and yeah so you're familiar with that i'm familiar with it and then uh i would say that since when i got when i received the alphabet code i've been very careful not to weave in a lot of other known systems so that i can express it as itself not overly influenced by other systems of meaning like the kabbalah but that is what it most closely resembles mm -hmm. definitely I was going to ask Harry, uh, is it that what, what blew your mind, that this can come out of, of, of a word, or what is it? You must, um, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, amongst other things. The whole thing is that it's, uh, how is it possible that somebody receives such a body of knowledge that's so coherent and consistent and makes sense while, while it's nonsense, and it, it seems to resonate with something that's not from this world or totally in this world, but yet seems to convey another truth, another viewpoint. And uh, basically, to me, it starts conveying a total change of my, my paradigm. Hey, Harry, it's not what you... Th life, reality is not what you thought it was. It's the other way around. It kind of turns my worldview... Uh, upside down i can go into that later maybe but it's this then and then she gives me words and then i have to look at it well really yeah i never looked at the, this meaning this word with this meaning but this makes sense but then i had to shift my 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 way of my meaning making in my paradigm in my frame of reference just skew it a bit and then until it basically <laughs> didn't make sense while this thing itself kept making sense it kept being coherent so I, i'm wondering uh, uh, tell me logically used english for for that no How, did you try it in in dutch uh, what does a tree mean in 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 dutch i mean when you use the dutch word or the german word or whatever is that then um coming together somehow it seems to What is tree in Dutch, Harry? Well, uh, maybe for the lady, she'll try the German word Baum. Baum, uh, yeah. That's B. A U A U M. Yeah. Okay. So its uh, its identity is being. Uh, its beingness is all that is and all that is not. Its role is containing. And the, its, its form is the natural cycles of the universe. So it's being all that is containing the natural cycles of the universe. Um, That's the M is the natural cycles of the universe, like in yes. OM? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, oh. But mm -hmm. still, there is a difference in English and in... German, because Heidi and I were talking before about the difference even in German and Austrian <laughs> German. Uh, yeah, because, and, and dialect. Like if we say, instead of Baum, you say Baum. In Austrian, it's a Baum. So, <laughs> uh, 
then you leave something out. Ah, my goodness. Um, where can we find the list of uh, the alphabet code? Uh, Harry and I have been putting together a first draft of the of, of a book and a and Harry's made a graphic. Harry, do you want to show the the graphic? And uh, and so in the next uh, in the next few weeks and months, I'm inviting people into a into a process of learning about the alphabet code with me. So this is the core piece that Harry designed, um, uh, and so here it is. Um, I'd love to hear your first impressions of what you see. Uh, when you see the alphabet code. I first would, uh, would say, coming back to what we said before, it would so be interesting when we accept that this is true, what, what you have found out, to find the difference in, in people. Because we were, th we were thinking about uh, Germans and Austrians are different, and then even in dialect. So different groups of people. If you can, with their way of speaking, come back to their worldview. That that would be oh, amazing. The, this this that's in itself not new knowledge. It's already there was a, a, a British guy I think no a British Chinese I don't know who mapped uh, British meanings and then put the Chinese meanings on top of them oh. and they're not on the same place. Mm -hmm. uh, so can we, we get, just yeah, yeah. sorry uh, because I'm I'm trying to. Now it's gone. But you oh, had you tears. You had first tier, second tier, oh, yes, third sure. tier. Uh, yeah, here it is again. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? May I, Tammy? Uh, well, in trying to, under, I, I'm a graphic designer and try to use visual thinking in order to understand uh, the alphabet code. And she uh, grouped the the words in triads first and then in tiers and uh, and in order to distinguish them more properly I uh, gave them colors and the first tier has is a is, and the second tier and the third tier are basically like uh, three iterations of a uh, similar set of meanings and Tammy can you t tell you more about it and that's why I gave them three colors so for me it was in order to navigate and below that you also see the numbers yeah the numerology is also very much uh, part of the whole thing, but uh, that's I'll I'll let Tammy explain more. Tammy, can you um, make full screen for this uh, picture if you keep yeah, it? You're on desktop, Harry. Do you mind desharing oh, and resharing? Oh, awesome. yeah. mm -hmm. oh, sorry. I'll just. No worries. Uh, Thank you. Um, so the the first tier is this full, is this full screen now. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I've, I see layers in front of it. I see your, your tools in front of the alphabet code. No, nope, I don't want that. I'll stop sharing. What I'm, mm -hmm. Well, I got several uh, instances <laughs> of it. Here's the preview. Are you, it's, this, this is a clean one, I think. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perfect. I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, would you say that uh, names also maybe uh, there may be a revelation about names, about your name? Definitely. I mean, that's, that's where I really started to, um, when I, when I, cause I would just randomly go out and talk to people and find my way towards talking about bridge to the alphabet code because it was so fascinating to me and I would do people's names and it, it, always had a massive effect on the person. They were like, oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> um, and, and I guess I, I also think that there's a, there is a revelation that is in the alphabet code that is nested within all of the letters that, that talk about us transforming our consciousness and, and being empowered to do that within ourselves. So I think no matter what is spelled, it's, it has this lens of the transformation of consciousness in it. Uh, well, I guess you are aware that I dropped the K in my name. It was somehow, uh, it didn't feel right anymore. So obviously I dropped the choice. <laughs> 
And yeah. Huh. Interesting. Yes. Very that's interesting. A, that's how it starts. That's how <laughs> people get hooked by their own name. Yeah, of course. You want that's what you were born with and that's what you carry your whole life. What is the purpose? Tammy has a purpose in the end. Uh huh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Me too, by the way. You Harry too, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, still, um, you paired it in threes. So, why? So this is presented as best as I could, uh, as as best as what presented. So I'm just in 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 expressing the alphabet code and in working with Harry to express the alphabet code graphically. Uh, I I and we have been wanting to stay as close to the initial meanings that as possible. So in the alphabet code, I uh, what I what I realized is that it's three times three times three because as you'll notice, there's an extra letter. There's a twenty seventh letter. Um, you may see there at the end, which is the Z with the stroke through it. Um, and as we progress through the alphabet code, we can understand why. Now, one, one thing I did years ago, 2002, something like that, this, this um, uh, body of knowledge came to me in 2001, in the, or in the 2000, um, in the summer. And... Uh, I, I, it, when I received it, it had that extra letter at the end, which I didn't realize until later made, made some beautiful um, uh, um, sense, which is that it creates a 3D object, a cube, uh, three times three times three. And one of the things that I did in 2002 is I created a, a set of blocks that, uh, that, so that I could, I could work with the alphabet code in 3D tactile space. Um, and that really helped me to kind of go deeper um, and, and look at the um, geometry uh, that is also with the alphabet code. Um, because you can, you're seeing a two-dimensional image here, um, but there's also three-dimensional relationships between the letters that also make, uh, that also inform the meaning of uh, of the alphabet code. Oh, that was what Harry just showed us before: the squares and blocks and circles and, uh huh. There, yeah. Definitely. Three-dimensional tactile. So you're building boxes for this to come with it? <laughs> I would love to. I would love to. We'll see. We'll see where we get. We can graphically reproduce uh, um, cubes for sure without having to, to, um, to, to make the blocks. I do want to make the blocks though because there's something about being able to actually touch them and look at the different relationships of meanings because you know really they're um constellations of meaning so a is all that is but it's also one and it's also all that is not and uh uh so all of these the the meanings kind of constellate to include more and using geometry and shape and spatial um uh relationship can can help to deepen uh, what the meaning is. Oh, here it is. Mm -hmm. um, let's start with A. <laughs> all that is and all that is not. Yeah. Um, how did you visualize or feel that? Well, that was the hardest one for me to get at the very beginning. Because how, you know, we are, I mean, the very notion of language is to cut away what all else is and to express something very particular and specific. Um, and so the, I think that that's probably the most difficult one for us to understand. I mean, we even try and say that there's been this big bang at the beginning, <laughs> that there's not this wholeness through time that 
anyways, we try and understand the world as something that we can bound. Um, but the notion of all that is and all that is not is a completely unbounded, um, eternal wholeness that it, it creates a difficulty, I think, for the human mind to really grasp and understand. Um, I'm still, of course, my reference is the Kabbalah. Yeah. And uh, the first where, word of Genesis, Bereshit, which starts with a B, uh, which receives. And A is actually, Aleph isn't really, you can't really define it. Mm-hmm. So all that is and all that is not, is this a way to define maybe a, a the of, ineffable <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i think so i think that's so, what actually. we try to talk about all the time talking about ineffable yeah um harry can you go back to the full uh alphabet code for a moment uh so one of the things that that i really get with the alphabet code is that it is uh it's three things it's a way for us to understand our own consciousness. It's a way for us to understand the world as described through words and to kind of have that mind blowing thing ha- happen that happened for Harry. Um, and it's also a way for us to collectively transform our consciousness and wake up, wake up to really who we are. And the fundamental part of that is this first tier and So as I am able to understand that I am, so if you start the first tier with an I am statement and say, I am all that is and all that is not. I am being, I am seeing, I'm form, I'm energy, I'm in relationship with all else. I'm essential, eternal, and complete. This begins a process of of self-realization of that I am, a, I am a center of consciousness myself. And the second row, second tier rather, is about the tools that I can use. So I create, I choose, I inform the world with my passing. I'm in the natural cycles of the universe. All that happens inside me with a boundary. Um, and I think I'm on a quest and I'm activating. That's the second tier. And then the third tier is I am connected. I am present. I contain, I can hold on the sacred chalice, the sacred uh, um, container. Um, and there's, and I'm experiencing flow. I'm in flow, understanding this change for a reason, for a purpose, the paradigm shift and that critical pathway through the paradigm shift. So that encapsulates the alphabet code in terms of our personal work, which is the first tier, um, the tools that we can use to choose and create and, and really go on this quest of activating our thinking together. And then the third tier being, how do we connect that all? And who are we really? For what purpose? And what is this paradigm shift that we're talking about? So it's a kind of, yeah, it's a, there's a development, uh, or let's put it this way. So it's getting uh, more complex, which coincides with all the evolutionary maps I know that they get more and more complex. Um, I'm still wondering about I, complete. If I is complete, what else do you need? <laughs> exactly. That's a great comment. Uh, I can own, I will share my experience with it. <clears throat> but I thought it was rather ambitious to call myself essential, eternal and complete. But if you go to the most advanced spiritual learning, it all points that's to that same point, that I am who I am and that I am enough. And I'm just one, one of the shards of the divine, just like you are. But taking that totally seriously and embodying that, 
requires a total presence and a total responsibility of who you are and living there to the fullest, the fullest being complete. So it's, that's basically not only a definition who we can be or who we essentially are, but also an invitation to really be that way. Uh, I'm a translator. So I'm bound by language. And if I look at it now in German, complete ich, I complete see uh, eternal. My goodness. <laughs> so Germans are much more deeper. <laughs> the German language is a complicated language and a very deep one. Yes. And uh, you can say things much faster in English. That's my impression. I've lived in the States for nine years. But you don't go really d deep down. Oh, God. This, yeah. I yeah. see. I see. Eternal. <laughs> oh. When will your book be ready? Uh, I'm hoping in the next few weeks. Um, Harry and I are working on on these uh, on the graphics and the different graphic representations, uh, as well as as uh, tinkering with the words. So what I what I'm doing is inviting people to participate in a cohort, uh, so that we can co-learn together. Because um, I I have my understanding of it and my lens that has to do with how I understand the world. And, and so in doing this co-learning with others, with Harry, but also others, uh, what I've understood is that every question, that's really important. And it helps to kind of open the meaning further. And so because it is about waking up and about how this series of, of concepts interact with our consciousness, that's the next stage, is to bring that to more people uh, so that it can interact with their consciousness and they can co-inform the meaning as it evolves. And it is an evolution. It's not, this is, this is a living body of knowledge, not something that's static and can be, you know, have the life hammered out of it. <laughs> so what I would be interested in, you say the names have a meaning, you know, I can do Heidi. I saw I was all in first tier when this is my name, but actually is Adelheid. So there I go also a little bit in the second. But um, do you think that our names, I mean, we didn't choose them. Somebody chose that, uh, the names for us. Is there some connection? Did, did, did they know what, what they wanted to give us as a task for life or whatever? Just it's, it's, it's a speculation, but I wonder what you think about that. Well, I mean, it is interesting. And it, I mean, even the notion of the alphabet code that this could be true, that each letter could have a meaning. It, it has that same question embedded in it. How could that be? Um, and, and how could it be that when your parents named you Adelheid, that that could have any meaning for your life? And yet uh, names are very meaningful for people. And uh, so the answer is, I don't know. I it doesn't make entire total sense to me in terms of linear uh, logical ways that we understand the world. But does it have a felt resonance and a felt sense of truth? It does for me. And, uh, and, and I think that's really why I want to work with others is to really kind of plumb the depths of, of uh, what that means to other people and where its limitations are or if there are any. Um, one of the things that I've realized, just to speak to the other language parts of things, is that in looking at it in Dutch, because uh, Harry and I are spending a fair amount of time together, and I've been really looking at the Dutch language, is, is the Dutch people use Z a lot more than we do in English. So self is self with a Z at the beginning. And so... Z is the, whether it's the first Z or the second Z, I guess that's a bit of a confusion, but regardless, uh, it, it means the paradigm shift. And so Dutch people have had to literally shift the paradigm of uh, water being on their land. 
So they've actually had to live this shift of paradigms. Uh, and, and I see so much more of Zed in the Dutch language. So these are some of the things where I look at the kind of cultural effects or cultural um, uh, meanings that emerge as you look at, as, as, as I look at different languages and yeah, it all kind of makes me go, Hmm, that's interesting. Okay. Well, you know, and people at, right now with climate change and the rising sea levels can learn a lot from the Dutch and how they have been able to manage um, rising sea levels over uh, decades and centuries. So this, this kind of, uh, uh, this, this, this thing of, you know, when, of, of finding the solution and shifting the paradigm as a nation, as a people. Uh, I, I, when I saw that, I was like, ah, interesting. That makes sense to me. Now I have another um, question. There are languages like German who have different uh, alphabet, uh, like er uh and a uh and things. Uh, how would you see that? Do, <laughs> ideally, would be induce a, a, a person in every language to get these letters, download these letters too. Yeah? Uh, in the meantime, would you just leave the points on top away, leave them out, as I do when I'm in, in Italy? I, from Hörnlein, I become Hornlein. But, so with other words, is it more the letters or is it more the, the sound? Or is, is it more the form of the letter? And what exactly is the basis of that? I, that, that will take more, more thinking. And certainly, you know, I've looked somewhat at it, but I haven't done a, a really deep dive. But I think that it'll have so, a sociological, cultural implications. And that... Uh, that's my sense. And I mean, then there's other things about, sorry, like, you know, Asian languages or indigenous mm -hmm. languages that don't have a written form. So this isn't a, isn't a all, but it's, it's just fascinating enough to take us on a journey of really, what is language? What is this thing that we use to share meaning? Uh, we can look at my name. I usually, in America, we dropped the E, but now I write it U and E, the, the U. So, uh, of course, it's a completely different sound, the U and the U. So, um, you mentioned uh, that you would like to establish groups. Will these be webinars or how do, are you planning that? Uh, it's still in development, but my idea so far is that I'll create a digital file for each person to be able to uh, read. So I've got a, about a 35 page document where I write about the, the overarching view of the alphabet code, some stuff about the letters and the maths, uh, and, and then each letter I do a deep dive. And this is the piece that Harry and I are working on together. So he's doing the graphic representations as well, which is a huge part of it because it's a felt sense when you look at Harry, do you want to show us some stuff? Sure, I can show. I can share the, this document we're working on. Great. Just a quick okay. overview to get an impression where we are. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so my what I'd like to do is have um, uh, is have everyone have their own copies so that they can play around with it in whatever way that they want, um, and so. So yeah, there's the intro and then there's these different ways where Harry and I have expressed um, um, the meanings of, of the alphabet code. There's, the, uh, there's these graphic representations. This one's neat here. I really like this one. This is the one that is the model where the words can be built on this sort of folding schema, which uh, well, I mean, there are reasons for that in terms of how the meaning's expressed, but it's it's a little bit more um, uh, further along down the road of learning. So, um, 
so yeah, so each letter will be expressed and uh, people will be able to kind of go to the one graph and break down the words for themselves, or they'll be able to really go deep into each letter and, and, and explore it. Um, so I will create a separate copy for each person and that's important so that each person can have their understanding of, of the, the essential understanding that they have with the alphabet code and not be influenced by other people's um, uh, meaning matrices or how they understand it and in that way I, I hope to you know chuck a bit of science in there and <laughs> and have uh, have uh, people's understandings not too influenced by each other and uh, be able to incorporate yeah what insights people have which is where I'm most curious, what, what insights come for anyone and, uh, and, and, you know, what questions arise. And then I'd like to do, uh, do uh, sessions online in Zoom where we're exploring this as groups and either breaking down words or going into um, concepts of uh, and, and ideas that arise for people as they explore it. Um, yeah, so kind of a, a, it's a work in progress, um, but giving people the information and then having space for us to be able to dialogue and discuss. That sounds wonderful, really uh, wonderful. And I still want to, wait a minute, <laughs> ask Harry, what, what was it that is putting upside down your, um, your worldview? For me, maybe I'm already in a different world. I don't know, but it, 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 I can say, yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> well, there are uh, already other systems of uh, meaning making, like uh, the very old I Ching, for instance, these this kind of oracles. And I would, don't know why this came into being through Temi, but uh, I, in trying to grok what it's, trying to convey I experiences as a different lens, a different different meaning making frame to look at reality. And it basically tells me, Harry, reality is not what you thought it was. And uh, the very interesting thing is that there are very old experiences that everything is inside. And uh, what I'm doing, perceiving the world is ba basically my projection of my understanding onto the world. And the very interesting thing that's happening these days that their most advanced scientific uh, interpretation of reality is like the hologram thing and all that is exactly the same. And the uh, uh, alphabet code seems to point to the, with form, getting letters and making words, it always points to the fact that, okay, Harry, this is all happening, this experiential space where I th that I call reality, this three-day space and this dimension of time, that's just the way that you basically see it, all that is being seen. I'm, I'm basically creating by seeing. It sounds stupid, but yet it's very consistent, this message, and everything is happening within. The middle, the very middle letter in the alphabet code is the N. It says within. So it basically suggests what has been also information come from other sources. It's all within. I'm just an expression of wholeness in this life and I experience this disappearing reality, but that's not true. It, this is an illusion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. That's that's where I'm where I'm right now. It's uh, without the alphabet code. So all right. Yeah, well, uh, uh, that, that's the thing. That is, it's not. It's not in that sense. It's not new, but it's once more. No, no. But it's that Temi's Temi's got this message. Hey, what needs to happen? And she got this, and it's very consistent. Uh, using language as a tool, which I what it's what I've been doing all my life, and becoming ensnared by it uh, because once you put something into a word, it's not really, as they said, the Tao uh, isn't, uh, that the can be named isn't the Tao and Wittgenstein said you have, you can't talk about some things. Exactly. Um, you were looking for, you said, if, if I go back to the beginning, you said um, you try to remember your purpose 
and you were looking for some kind of uh, alignment to come into alignment. This is something I found when I looked at Ken Wilber's maps. All of a sudden I was in, yeah, I could see where I was, what my cosmic address, it wasn't called that word, but now where my cosmic address is. So uh, this is another tool that might help to find where you are and what your purpose is. If you yes. need a purpose, then what's your mission? If you need a mission, uh, yeah. That's great. That's really so, good. Thing. Thank you, Tammy, for channeling that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to I be very practical. So I want to know my purpose. So what do I do? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, looking at your name is a great way. Um, and, uh, and, and everyone has their own insights that come to them around that. Uh, so your name as 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 it was given to you, and then the name as how you use it. So you can look at both of those things. Um, now, if I take Heidi, it's a five-letter name. So you're, um, that you know would be about energy. You're you know partly about energy, um, and the first letter is eternal. H is eternity. So there's this identification with eternity, with Heidi. Um, the, the second letter is your state of being. So again, energy is what sits there. Um, your role is to complete things. And your, so the, the, the way that you see the world also is to, is to complete things. And so the work that you do with the Wisdom Factory in understanding things, in creating these segments, they are complete kind of... Um, iterations of of how you see the world. Um, the fourth letter is D, which is form, and it's in the place of form, so it squares itself. So you want to actually make practical, physical things. Um, and the I is in the place of energy, and I is completing. So you, for if I look at Heidi, there's a strong purpose on on taking this eternity. D, which is absolutely unbounded and, and not complete, and bringing it into this state of being, of energy, that is complete, formed, and, and yeah, complete. Um, listening to you, Thank so you. the position of the letters are also important. Very and much. Five le and, and the length of the letters, five letters connote something different than if my name is eight letters long and... Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, for instance, would you also analyze uh, a phrase like "What is my purpose?" or "What shall I do?" Would you also do that? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. That's interesting. Thank you for that. And it's uh, it's also interesting. I will go back to it because I don't like Adelheid so much, and I like better Heidi. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> I will figure out why is that. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call it interesting. I would call it fascinating. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, it can really turn your mind around. Yeah, I haven't done it yet, the, the comparison. So I will tell you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can. I know we're coming up to the hour, but I think that it does make sense to do the, the both of them. You've got one layer sitting on top. Perfect. Thanks, Harry. Uh, so uh, Adelheid is, I mean, all that is being in the place of all that is as your identity, I can see that that's holding a lot. I would way rather be uh, simply eternal than have to represent and hold all that is and all that is not as an identity. Um, now the state of being is form. So that also kind of connects to, to uh, Heidi in that your beingness is about form. The way that you see is, is, is uh, uh, or in the place of seeing, you have energy. So it's important for you to see. Um, the form is to inform. So the form that you take as Adelheid is to inform. And then the energy 
is eternal. The relationships are about energy. And the, your essence is complete and your eternal nature is form. So Adelheid as a flow is all that is form energy informing this eternal energy of complete form. I'm just looking, so it's identity, state of being, perspective, form, energy, relationship, essence, and eternity. Uh, is there any, all of these uh, terms are connected with something positive? In our, is there anything negative? Good question. Well, um, I don't think that they necessarily um, have that duality of positive and negative, mm -hmm. personally. I think they sit outside of that duality. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it, it certainly does do kind of a transcendent transformation of how we understand duality because it's pretty present for us in 3D. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm aware of the time, but uh, we uh, I tried to challenge that as well, doing words like wrong in the alphabet code. Like what? Wrong. Wrong. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Well, I I can't remember, but I can try. <laughs> so. So yeah, this is our this is our this is the cutting room floor where we um, mm -hmm. look at words and really um, kind of go deeper in in um, what they mean. So wrong in the alphabet code. Harry, do you want to do it? I can try. So it's all it is about. It's, it's about wrong is about understanding and the being that it activates something, and it's putting uh, boundaries on what you see so it can and uh, and the form is within so basically that tells you that this what you think is right or wrong is happening inside you it's a judgment inside yourself mm -hmm. and the energy is about the essence so you it feels to me that i if i use a word like wrong or right i try to grok what's okay only according to me of course things can only be wrong on my own because it happens since the form of it happens inside me so it's interesting I love the way you use grokking, so just naturally. <laughs> I haven't heard it in decades, <laughs> and we used it, yeah, we used to use it, yeah. Yeah, well, that's what you can hang out with, uh, those uh, American and Canadian hippies and all that. <laughs> <laughs> so but this, is, this is a nice way for me to tell me that's all happening inside of me, and it's, very, it's just my lens of looking at things. So it's it's a very it's a never ending exploration. Like with all, all the other uh, esoteric systems, you can yeah I could can spend my life understanding the I Ching or so. But this is basically a lens of looking up at my understanding of mm -hmm. what I am and and my purpose and whatever. Well, I can't wait to have a look at the book. <laughs> This is, yeah. And let uh, us know when you do these yeah. groups because I yeah. definitely would be interested in participating for your research project and Thank then you. Write, a, write a book about this research, you know, and what comes out of that, that would be really yeah. worthwhile. Mm -hmm. I don't want to overdo it, but I want to... Uh, no, we still show. have five minutes, that's okay. okay. I want to show another image that's basically a working document by Tammy herself and... Uh, Maybe you want to talk to it, but I think it's in, this is an interesting one to, to look at. This is uh, an, uh, a poster Tammy made, and what basically this position is also the alphabet recursive to itself. So it's basically the A is the first first letter, so that's about the B, the, the all that is, and the B is about being. But this way you can make a diagram of 27 times 27 different meanings. And it keeps expanding and it keeps making sense, which is super fascinating. Here she did until uh, a, a seventh. Yeah. So we, uh, we want to say something more about it, Tammy? 
Well, this in with this project, this was last summer where I really wanted to go deeper into each letter because what I understood was was that you know there's not just the one meaning they they kind of cascade out and I wanted to take it to the essential meaning which was the seventh iteration so in the G which is the seventh letter means essence so I really wanted to uh, to take it to a completion of the essence so I I really sat with this over a few days and just really meditated and did my best to uh, feel what each progression of meaning would be. And so this really helped to, uh, to deepen the channel of the flow of information to be able to uh, go uh, deeper and, and, and wider into what the meanings might be. So yeah, thanks. What what I like about it is that, that it it stayed coherent. It didn't lose any coherence at all. Right. Quite the contrary. There was I nothing. actually don't really understand it. I cannot see it good enough, well enough to to, no. to understand what you have done. No, it's just but, the alphabet code A B C this way, A B C that ah, way. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. And so the, see the uh, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I was a, a, quite a big exercise, and I was rather critical. And so okay, yeah. Yeah, when there's that kind of, there's the, well, when it becomes like artificial, I'm a graphic designer. And once you have a graphic design, basically you want to fit everything exactly into the grid. And life doesn't fit into grids. So, uh, so, the, so when are we kind of cheating to make it look good? And when are we totally honest about what, what it is, the, the, essence, the essence of it? So that was a very, uh, I thought it was a very, useful exercises to test the alphabet code against itself. Uh -huh. And so the conclusion is? There is no definite own conclusion. That's my conclusion. It's uh, like everything. It's an uh, unfolding and it's an, a never ending quest for understanding and deepening uh, our presence and all that. So I think, I don't think there's an end to it. For me, how I would, wrap it is that uh, there is an ongoing transformation of consciousness as we wake up, as we remember who we are, and that the alphabet code is a tool to be able to uh, take that into the, the tools that we use to, to express into language. So it's, it's, it's surprising. I, I think about my hand. I have no idea really how this works like the all of the processes that mean that i can do this is not perceptible to my uh it, it, you know it's not top of mind i'm just making that motion i feel that language is the same language is something that we use as a blunt instrument but it has a lot more um bones marrow blood veins in it than we know so the exploration of the alphabet code is really to dive into the universal intelligence that wraps all around us and is encoded in the language that we use to express meaning. That's my best guess. Well, I couldn't add anything to that. It's just a wonderful final statement. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm very interested in into the implication which it has, as I am interested in languages, so how, uh, and cultures, you know, how this is then uh, playing out to, to give, for instance, the difference between Austrians and Germans, which we have noted, <laughs> or, or, or Dutch people. So maybe we get that through the language. We have an intuitive understanding that we use language differently. Also, the melody of Austrian language is much nicer than the German language, much more melodic. But that it could also be in the alphabet? Ah, you know, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> thank you so much for exploring this with us. Yeah, and thank you for yeah. uh, sharing. And I'm so glad yeah. that you're doing this together and uh, that you have this additional possibility to make it graphically seen, which is helping a lot because language is one thing, but when you can see it at the same time, it's, it's so much more complete. 
Yeah, I thank you very, very much, both of you and Monia, for your usual good questions. <laughs> very glad. And we will do a follow-up session when you have your books ready yeah. and when we have more insights into that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you yeah. very, thank you. very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.